Hello and welcome, friends, to episode 135 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. Okay, excuse me, sir, I have a question. All right, what's your question? How long does it take to get good at guitar? You smiling yet? I'm smiling. Why? Because that's the ultimate beginner's question. That's definitely the mark of a new guitar player. But don't gloss over it. It's a really good question and it's an honest question. And it's one that I think we need to revisit from time to time. I keep this one in my mind a lot. You get a disconnect. Well, the disconnect that early guitar players experience is they want instant results. But what they don't know is they just left on a long journey. Uh, it's the equivalent of the all too familiar vacation question, are we there yet? How much longer? So what's good and what's bad about the guitar journey is that it never ends. We never arrive at our destination. We never say, phew, thank God that's over. We're finally here. This is something very different. And why would you want to start something like that anyway if you, you would never finish it? Being a musician is not about the end goal. It's about the process. It's about being who you are and being at the stage you are and sharing your music then. It's got value in all its different stages. And there's something to be enjoyed and learned from players who have just started or players who have been playing for a while or for playing for a few years all the way to advanced players. It's true. So what's the answer to that question? How long does it take to be good at the guitar? I usually answer that with a question right back. Have you practiced today? <laughs> then you're in good shape if you have. If you haven't, go home, set up a practice schedule, and you'll be in good shape. If you're listening to this podcast, then you're searching out ways to get better at the guitar. And what I do is I help frustrated guitar players get back to getting better at the guitar. So this episode right here, this one, this is the ground floor. Once you get these two concepts I'm about to go over, you've already won. You've won half the battle before you even started. There's a better way to learn guitar. Better than just beating your head against the wall over and over again. Uh, today I want to start off correctly. I want you to make sure that you can ex uh, enjoy the experience of playing music instead of experiencing stress and experiencing frustration. There's something interesting I've discovered. Success as a guitar player, it's usually combined with something that you might not expect, and that's repetition. I've noticed that students that practice on a regular basis, they move forward and they get encouraged. But binge practicers, they usually stay stagnant. So we're going to call this first step, uh, we're going to call this, it's a concept. It's called harnessing the power of repetition. Repetition is the best way to get better at anything you do. Uh, we all remember putting things off to the last minute in school. <laughs> it's one of the most common things we share across the world. We all share procrastination, right? How, how did you feel that night before the test when you weren't prepared for it? Were you calm? Were you relaxed? Of course not. You were stressed. But the opposite happens when you studied a little bit every day. When the quiz or the test comes around, this time you felt confident, you felt present, and you felt relaxed. Think about that, confident, present, and relaxed. That's just the way you would think a performer who's having a great time music would, would be. Would you want to watch a performer who is stressed and unsure of himself or herself? Most likely not. So repetition for the guitar can be a reliever of stress. Why is the guitar stress stressful? It's not supposed to be. Because you don't really know what you're doing and you aren't sure if you can pull it off. Does that sound familiar? That's stressful. Or it could be because you feel like you've put in a ton of time and you're not sounding any better. 
something very different and very special happens when you work on guitar, even for a short amount of a time on a daily basis. It's the best stress release ever. And why is that? Because you become better acquainted with what you know and what you don't know. You make peace with it. The path ahead becomes clear. You can easily determine what you know well and what you could use some time in the woodshed with. Also, you're keeping the things that you're working on at the front of your mind. And you're doing it without effort because it's on a routine. It's a daily basis. Uh, you're committing your thoughts. You're committing these concepts, the movements you make. You're committing those all to long-term memory. Um, to the place in your mind that knows how to walk. It knows how to tie your shoes. knows how to drive your car. You know how to eat and sleep and speak without thinking. It also gets you used to achieving regular, small goals and getting used to working on new things that you're not good at on a daily basis that's a key to moving forward on the guitar not being embarrassed that you don't know everything about guitar yet it's very healthy why is that because learning the guitar is huge it's enormous there's so much so many different directions you can go and you can't be good at everything but what you can do is you can focus on specific things and you can use the power of repetition and chip away at them one milestone at a time. The other really special thing about daily repetition is that you get some help that you may not have thought was there. You get help from your subconscious mind. Can't tell you how many times I've heard something like this. I've been working on this thing. I was doing it yesterday and I couldn't do it. Then I went to sleep, and when I practiced the next day, I could just play it. You ever experienced something like that? Well, what happens with that? What happens overnight? Was it, Were you like Neo and you downloaded super kung fu skills? <laughs> no, your brain was processing things that you weren't able to get at the time. It's working for you. I'm not a brain <laughs> scientist, so I can't tell you how this works at all. But I can just tell you I've seen evidence that there's a helper in there somewhere. So today, make sure you set aside a small amount of time each day to work on difficult guitar problems. And then you can start getting some of the best help you've had as a musician. Let's talk about the second, the second concept that we need to get in touch with to really start out correctly. And that's starting the journey. So I have a question for you. Is the group always right? Mass uh, ideas of how things should go. Is the group always right? Is the way that guitar players have decided now that they want to learn today, is that right? And that is really by watching random videos, random disjointed snippets of content so that they can copy other guitar players, but they don't have the burden of knowing actually what they're doing. Is that the best way to learn? Well, if it's not working out for you, you're not alone. There are a ton of frustrated guitar players out there who picked up the phone and they typed in how to play guitar. Being scattered, it's never the best way to learn it's never way, the best way to learn anything. And the way you approach this thing, that means everything. So we're gonna think of being a musician as being someone who's on a journey. And this goes back to when we first started this podcast, the opening statement. How long is it gonna take to get good at the guitar? That's the wrong thinking. This isn't a competition between players. This isn't a race to acquire the most songs. What you've done is you've started a very valuable lifelong process and you're going to reap big rewards, endless rewards from this. So we go back to the introduction again today and this line makes a lot of sense. Being a musician, it's not about the end goal. It's about the process. It's about being who you are at the stage you are and sharing your music. What you do has value. Music has value at 
all of its different stages. There's something to be enjoyed, something to, to be learned from players who have just started or for players who have been playing for a while, playing for a few years, all the way to advanced. It's true. Being content that you're on that path and that you'll keep at it and, and you'll progress. And that's the key. And the farther you go, the more confident you become because you've experienced the regular completion of small goals. And guess what happens? You get used to that feeling, that feeling of achievement, something that you start to expect. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about small goals. Let's talk about splitting something large into small, smaller, easy to accomplish bits. That's something we can all handle. And if you do the research, if you figure out what it takes to learn how to do something big, what do you need to know? You can just list out all of the small goals it takes to achieve that. And what does that make? What's that list of small goals that are headed in one direction? That's a roadmap. What's a roadmap do? It gives you the shortest route to a destination. Learning to play a certain song in the shortest amount of time possible where you understand why it works and you've trained your subconscious mind to be able to play it on autopilot. That's, that's it right there. Sounds good right? And you get all of that from taking the whatever 10 minutes it takes to list down all the things you need to do to be able to play that, that song. So let's, let's do an example. Number one, learn the chords, right? So that's your first step. First small goal. Let's learn the chords of this song. Second small goal, play the chords in time. So you've learned the chords. Now you can play them Make sure they're right in time. Third small goal, learn the licks to the song. That could be the lead guitar licks or any other kind of guitar licks in there. Learn those next. We're knocking things down. We're headed in the right direction. Number four, figure out how those licks work over the chord. What scales do they come from? Why do those scales and chords work together? Fifth step, be able to improvise over that song. Once you've figured out those licks, you're good. You start to build your own licks over this song. And then the very last step is to polish your performance, making sure that you play that song well, everything that you've learned. We want one, two, three, four, five, six, small goal, small goals, all the way up to bam, you've got it. No stress, no sweat. Being on the journey, it brings focus to the present. You ever said this? Oh, I'll never be able to play that. You ever felt that way? I've said this in a few podcasts, but it's really important. Have you ever even said that out loud? Right? That is That phrase is a killer. That's a toxic phrase. Get rid of that now. Remove that saying and the thinking behind it. Do it now. Let me tell you, playing guitar is not easy. But it's nothing that you can't handle if you think of it as a journey and you use the power of repetition. When you're on a journey, you have everything mapped out. Your roadmap, you stop stressing on how you're gonna do something, or if you're it, even gonna be able to do it at all. That thinking's gone, because you have to focus on the small goal that's at hand. And then what's also a bonus for today's guitar players is you tend to stop looking around at all the shiny other guitar things. And you don't look at those until you're ready to move on to your next set of goals. So let's put this all into practice. Let's set up a daily practice routine by creating our roadmap of small goals and finding a time each day to chip away at this. So let's figure it out. What are you always putting off that never gets done? What is something that you know is holding you back, but you avoid it because it feels like it's too big a job for you? It might be that your rhythm needs work. You, you might rush when you're playing a certain song, 
or you you might have a hard time playing certain rhythms at a certain speed make a decision decide the big thing that you need to work on next we're going to create our list of small goals that you would need to conquer that that dragon that big goal if it's rhythm start with the basics get a metronome and play some quarter notes right get started and then it could be playing those quarter notes at a certain speed up to the speed of the problem that you're having the rhythm next change those quarter notes to eighth notes play that at the lower speed the next maybe increase your your speed up to that problem speed that you have next go to 16th note rhythms from low speed to high speed then start mixing them together from low speed to high speed and finally when you've got all of these supportive skills that you need to be able to play this problem rhythm then your very last step is attack that problem ryth rhythm start at a lower tempo and work your way all the way up to the high there it is man that's a, a roadmap of small goals that you can work on daily that won't it'll just help you it's not going to improve you well it's going to get you from where you started to tackling that problem rhythm and it's also going to help not just that specific problem but it's going to help all of your rhythm work as well you're getting solid solid skills let's talk about when we're going to do this we need to find our manageable times even with the best intentions life can get in the way if you schedule a consistent time for daily practice that's great but for a lot of us that's not possible don't let that stress you out though you need to be flexible with your family you need to be flexible um, with your work when it comes to your practice routine and sometimes having different times for say maybe weekdays and then a different time for weekends that that's necessary and that's okay even if you have to set a different time for every day that's fine just as long as you get that worked out ahead of time and you try to stick to some sort of a schedule you'll be headed on the right path so there it is that's ground zero that's the get out of the a la carte method of learning <laughs> make some decisions on what you need to do and go forward with them in a daily but easily manageable practice routine and you're going to be ahead of the game even if you just started playing today so if you've made it this far i thank you for listening today uh, you're headed in the right direction and i have a free gift for you it's my um uh, setting up your ultimate practice space uh, download ha it's having a daily routine it needs to be distraction free and comfortable and what i've got for you is a checklist uh, to make sure you have everything set up for maximum progress and that's at playguitaracademy.com forward, forward slash practice okay so we're going to call it that's a wrap thank you for joining me today for the play guitar podcast if you like what you heard please subscribe to the show in apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player also, I really appreciate it if you could leave a review for the show. If you're just starting or you're new to the guitar, head on over to startheareguitar.com. You can check out my premium 11-week beginner's course. It will give you the foundation you need to move forward correctly on the guitar. Follow me on all my different social media pages. Links to them are at playguitaracademy.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next episode. There we go. That was it. Okay, so we're, I'm going to go. It's a shorter one today, but a really powerful one. Those are the, 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 the two main concepts that if you have down, you will quit wasting time on the guitar and you'll be seeing progress as I'm seeing with uh, the coaching students from week to week to week. And I really wanted to get this out there for not just new guitar players, but frustrated guitar players in general. Okay, so I'm going to head back over to the chat here. And I'm sure I've missed a good bit. But um, we're going to go back and check everything out here. Okay, so let's see here.
talking about um, Evan's bass. That was cool. That was awesome. And um, Kevin says almost picked up a Mexican strap for only 200 bucks last night, but it was too slow to respond. That would, uh, the poly finish was chipped off in the area. That would have been a good deal. Um, Coke is uh, d d doing errands, but here occasionally. It's good to see you, Coke, man. I bet you got a, <laughs> you got a bunch of errands you got to get to today. Um, let's see here. Coke posted some songs on Facebook. That's cool. We're going to go check those out. Uh, let's see here. David says, nice shirt. Appreciate that, man. Thanks to Dean, man. This is awesome. And um, Spark's getting, David Spark Amp's getting a workout. Looking forward to that. Maybe this coming weekend, we might be able to to uh, show it off a little bit if that if you're okay with that. Chris is here. Hi, Chris. Dean is here. Hi, Dean. Liking the red tea. Thank you, Chris. Uh, let's see here. Joe's Joe's busy at work, but but uh, popping in a little bit. That's awesome. And let's see here. Gloria likes the shirt too. Yeah, man, this is awesome. I love it. Dave said, this is all truth. I started playing later in life with no idea how I was going to achieve learning to play. I did know repetition was going to be the key, but no idea where to start and what to learn. Well, I hope this helps, David. I, you know, I, I hope this kind of, um, you've been through Start Here Guitar and now we're on to 102. And this is the formula we're going to be using over and over and over again. And, you know, just like your chords, as we're seeing your chords getting better and better and better and better, we're going to use the same concept for everything. And this is something that's come, you know, uh, for the people here who are, who are familiar with the way I do things, this is a, this these two concepts might be a no brainer. But th this is not what most people are dealing with. I'm helping someone on email right now who's a player who's been playing for a long time, for 30 years, and is a good player, but has but it's not sure, it just does it all by ear and would like to, has come to a, a point where he can't move any far, move past where he's at. You know, and these concepts just aren't, are foreign to a lot of people. So, um, so I really, this is kind of the ground zero and everything, you know, all of these podcasts and all of the levels that we've been going through they all build on this this concept um and it's been being reinforced lately uh by the coaching that i'm seeing so i just thought it was important to 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 not just new guitar players but people new to the podcast or people who are really frustrated so i'm glad that that sinks in with you too david that's great hey there man i hate i'm gonna call you mister because i don't know how to pronounce the the rest of that but uh uh, welcome uh, from Russia, a musician. That's awesome. Great to have you here, man. Interesting wor Russian word in English letters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris says, we were all just listening, Lee. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And I know most of the people here get it, but, you know, this is, this is, it's, it's, it was good for me going through this. You know, it's good for me. It kind of, um, personally, I've got the I'm I'm in in the same boat that most people are. Uh, I've got work issues, you know. I've got a a lot of work going on, and I'm juggling things. And um, the, before I know it, even with good intentions, before I know it, uh, guitar goes out the window. And uh, I've got I've, I've got to stop myself and and pick a time, you know and and sometimes, like we said earlier, I have to, the night before, I have to go, well, what am I doing tomorrow? I'll sit there with my phone, with my schedule, and I'll say, well, there's a time I could practice, you know? So it's, 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 it's tough. It's tough for everybody, and I'm not any different than anybody else. This was as much for me as it is for new people as for everybody else there, too. So, um... David says, great stuff, Lee. I love the road I'm on now. Moving forward with learning guitar, and it's fun all the time. Awesome. Awesome. 
And let's see here. And David's cool with the Spark Show. Yeah, let's do that. Um, let's do that on Saturday if you've got some, um, four o'clock on Saturday free. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Um, I was saying yesterday I've got I'm go going to try and get a new platform going on. Um, I'm going to work on that next couple of days and maybe I can get that working. I'm not sure. But if not, we can just use Zoom like this, like we've done before. That'll work fine. Uh, let's see here. Brennan's here. Hey, Brennan. Awesome. So happy you're here, man. Um, Evan says, I signed up for Sundays, Joe. I totally... And you, okay, that, that's what you guys were talking about there. And David missed last week. He was on vacation, but got some practicing in. That's good. And so Mr. says, sorry that I know English is not so good. That's okay, man. We got people from all over the world here. And we're, we are um, happy that you're here. And uh, we, we, we don't have any problem with that at all. So feel uh, welcome. And Evan says, I'm having the most fun I've ever had with my guitar. Yeah, if you ever, <laughs> these are, I, you know, I wanted to say this in the podcast as I was, as I was getting the outline together today, I was wanting to say, man, I just was wishing, hey, everybody could see whatever, how, you know, what, you know, different people were, um, see their videos, you know, I don't, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> I wouldn't put it out there, but, uh, you know, it's great. It's just a wonderful thing. Things are working. It's nice when things are working. And um, Evan says, hey, we're all here to learn a different language anyway, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to, to um, we're trying to um, conquer the, uh, the common language of procrastination, the worldly problem that we all share. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, it was a shorter one today, but I'm cool hanging out, you know? Um, we talked a little bit about yesterday. Yesterday was fun. Like I said, I went back and, and laughed all over again from today. It was a lot of fun for me. Um, if you weren't here, we featured the, uh, the Pest Killer 2000 Bugs, <laughs> Bugs ever <laughs> during the show. Oh, man, that was good. That was really good. I don't, I don't ever really go back and watch these things, but you know, if you didn't see yesterday's show, I would, I would highly recommend it. It was, fun. <laughs> it was really fun. David's here. Zap. David's here, man. That's what I'm going to say every time I see it. Zap. It's David. Um, so what's the week look, look like for everybody? Hoping there's some practice in there. I do know for um, a good bit of you that we that uh, mo most of us today. I know. Um, let's see here, our very own robot friend. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, we uh, we're gonna keep on this uh, weekly, weekly, weekly practicing routine. Um, I'm going to tell you, I should know, let's see here, today's the 27th, so I should know in two weeks what my, what my schedule for the next month or two is with, with the move, and I'm going to try to uh, have, for the coaching students, I'm going to try to have those two weeks figured out ahead of time, you know? And so what I may do is for, on the coaching videos for that last week before I, I move, um, set every, everybody up with two weeks work of, of, of work for that. Uh, and I, I may just, I'll definitely be checking in as it goes, but I don't know, you know, when you move, everything is kind of up in the air. Uh, but you will have at least uh, a month and a half of warning before I will kind of go dark for <laughs> for a little bit. And I'm hoping the 
uh, it looks like in Florida today. I looked like it today. It looks like the um, the curve is starting to maybe start to go down, hopefully. So I'm really hoping that um, by the time that we get to Florida, everything is kind of on the way, you know, getting better. But, you know, what's better at this point? Uh, so let's go back to the chat here. Uh, Gloria says, practice, practice, and more practice. Yeah, man, that's, that's, I, it's awesome. I love practicing. Um, so Evan says, practice later, singing tonight, and tooth extraction Thursday. You've got all of those in the right order. You don't want the tooth extraction ahead of the singing part, right? <laughs> so Chris has got the day off. You deserve it. That's awesome. You can do no work in, in the, uh, in the workspace and play some guitar. That'd be fun. And Coke says his week is looking like feed, change baby, play with Luperville, <laughs> run errands, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, I would play guitar a lot. My daughter was, was tiny. We, we would have, um, shifts. My wife and I would do shifts and, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, really intense stuff going on, and then baby falls asleep, and then you've got nothing to do till the to the next one. So I remember. I promised myself I wouldn't forget. That was that was a wonderful time. It was a tough time though too. Chris says the rest of his week is not so great. Well, he'll find some time. Kevin is practicing tonight. That's good. Uh, David's got more um, strumming practice. And better timing on the Tom Petty songs. That's great. <laughs> the Rev Ev says, don't back down, David. You got it. I won't. I won't back down. Rev. Brennan. Practice, practice, practice. Working on one, five, six, four. Yeah. Yeah, that was neat. Um, if you guys haven't seen Brennan's last video, he was... Working on chord progression one five six four, and it's a very common chord progression. Let's see here. Let me get you some guitar. Right, and a lot of songs. I'm just, you can, so much, so much um, that you can do with those chords. And we were talking about, well, how do you do something like that? You know, you hear all these different songs and they share chords, but they're not the same, not the same song. I think he said there was like U2 and like a whole bunch of different ones using those. And so we were talking about the first step and that's duration, how long to make them last. So that was in, in the key of A, I've got a one five, six minor, and a four, right? And so if you get this in you, this is just straight through. Uh, the, the one thing is duration. So I just extended how long each chord lasts and it changed it completely. Not the same song. And then so you could do that with some and then not with others. You could go. So I went short on the first one. Let's go long to short. So I, on that one, I hit one really long time. When I hit the five, it's just bam, one, and then straight on to the next chord. Um, so 
that's the you know they that doesn't sound like a very complicated thing to do but it's it's com to totally different you know get more mileage out of all this stuff there's only so many chords and there's only so many notes and there's been millions of people making stuff up with these you know so there's a, there's nothing new there except for the way that you um arrange these things arrange the notes arrange the rhythms so i think um i think that was a really neat thing that um that brennan brought up this week uh <laughs> zap david sparrow zapping my guitar with some practice shortly yeah that was i'm telling you that that zapper has is endless it, it's it's been been so rough here and so that was a really it's been a rough week or two and i just needed to laugh and i think yesterday was where it, it kind of all um it all happened it, and continue to laugh about it this morning so it was fun uh let's see here dean says uh moving really is a job i was <laughs> gonna use a different word yeah oh man it's just like the weirdest. I, I, it's just, it just feels like it's been going on forever. Uh, well, it's going to happen. I mean, it's going to happen. We're going to figure it out. <laughs> David's free falling. He's on it. Um, so David's going to post free falling when he gets the timing down. And he's got the chords and they sound good. Great. Just like we talked about mapping everything in order. That's awesome small goals even better through the, sp the spark amp yeah it's it, you know it's funny yeah, every once in a while just changing it up getting practicing through a new sound it's awesome coke says i really should memorize more common chord progressions gonna have to figure out a good practice routine and, and you know sometimes i'll sit down and i'll map out what i want to do for the next week or, or it's a, a short you know kind of a a roadmap for my practice routines and by the third day it I may go in a completely different direction that's okay I had a starting point you know um, Evan says my last song was one five four and the newest one is a one five just making it interesting somehow yeah there's nothing wrong with simple chord progressions there's nothing wrong with that at all they work man Brennan was going to ask him about his chord progressions, and your song's got me thinking about how to personalize a progression to make it your own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. So we've got, um, we've got guitar news on Friday, and then hope, hopefully David can join me on Saturday, and we're going to, we'll, we'll, uh, We'll uh, let him go through his favorite tones on the Spark Amp. That would be fun. We're going to ask him a bunch of questions. I'm going to um, watch a bunch of videos about the Spark Amp ahead of time so I'm a little bit more informed in my questions. Uh, so, and uh, looking forward to that. And um, then Sunday, we're going to have another hangout. I may have a guest on that. Definitely gonna. I, I definitely think I'm gonna bring back the um, Pest Killer 2000. I thought that was j just for the lighting alone. <laughs> it, it was. It was worth it. Um, and then next Monday, I don't know yet. Haven't haven't decided. I've got a list of of topics uh, for the podcast, but I, you know, I, I wanted to take a step back and do this one today. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad it was a little shorter because last week's was a, a marathon podcast. It was like an hour long. It's like in here, it was like an hour and a half. I edited an hour out of it. Um, but I'm not going to, you know, edit this one at all. I'm just going to put it right out there. Um, so we're talking about personalizing a progression to make it your own. And... I was talking about rhythm, but what else can we do? What else can we do about, let's take this same. What, 
what else can we do with the progression other than rhythm? Well, you got two sides of it. You've got the 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 chords themselves are in the rhythm. Uh, so the chords, if you wanted to keep those chords in order, you could add extensions to to them. Um, let's see here. Seventh chords. I don't know if that. And then. So my thing with here is like a ninth chord, or A major seventh to an E seven, and then six uh, minor seventh. Yeah, so let's see, kind of like a Steve Ray Vaughan, uh, like a yellow Ledbetter type thing. Adding some extensions to them. Uh, I was experimenting with sevenths there. Some of that worked out, some of that didn't so well. Uh, and then uh, what could you do next? You could change the order of the progression. So you could start... Um, Start just swapping a chord. I just swapped the minor chord playing first. And you could even, like that time I left the one chord out, you know? I, I just did the six to five to four. And at some point you could resolve to the one there. So you could keep some, keep one of the, like the, the resolving chord, the, the longer you play that. Um, there's a good one. Right, so I kept that, I, I did a six, four, five, and when you when you rest on that five five chord always makes your ear want to go back to the one chord and the longer you don't do that the more tension that you build doesn't feel finished right right um you could borrow, I think someone says borrowing chords. You could borrow from like the two, five, one. So, you know, jazz is usually around the two, two, five, one. I did a two to five and then six to four. You know, um, there's a million things that you could do with that. So uh, we could do, um, let's see here. Oh, well, let's stop leaving the one out. So let's let's start with them. Adding passing. That was just a passing in the bass line. Uh, you could start um, going from major to minor. You could try it in a minor.
Let's see, what would the, um... So, so let's see here. Yeah, played as if it it was in minor. So it'd be a minor one to a minor five to a major six to a and I made that an F to a to a minor four. You know, some of them work better than others, but j just ideas. There's a lot of different things that you could do from there. Um, let's go back to the chat here. Okay, here we go. And timing. You can riff in between them. You can add suspended notes. That always works. Um... Maybe not on all of them like I just did, but um, Chris said on some of the old songs I wrote, I would try and do something unexpected. Yeah, you can pull, pull a chord that isn't in the key and force it in there, and sometimes that, that works really nicely. Gloria says, borrow chords. Uh, Mr. says, are you, only, are you playing only electric guitar? No, just right here, just now. I'm, uh, in, I'm not I've got, um, kind of in between houses, so... I don't have all of my stuff here, but no, I play electric. I mean, I play acoustic guitar as well. Um, Coke says, just learned a bit from Niles Rogers regarding make it your own. Think of six string and sets or threes for each chord. So strumming various parts rather than the entire thing throughout the song. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to um, play big block chords for everything. Sometimes just even two notes uh, will stick out more. Uh, then uh, I, I one of the first things I did in high school is I played in the jazz band, which was a big band with like tons of horn players and you have a keyboard player. And there's just tons of stuff going on all the time. And I went in playing my big chords and I just got lost in it. Not, not that I got lost, but the sound got lost and um, started paying attention and looked at what the piano player was doing. And I figured, well, the piano's got all those keys probably playing huge chords playing like they're playing like two three notes at a time stabs right at the right rhythm where it would where you would feature the piano and it wouldn't get in the way of everything else and so i started paying attention to that finding different rhythms than the piano player was playing because we were both basically doing the same thing um and so i wasn't playing what she was playing and and i was not playing huge voicings i mean if you Honestly, if you took a, a guitar voicing and played it exactly this note, A, E, A, C sharp, E, A, and spread that out over three octaves, that's a huge piano chord, right? Uh, so the guitar chords that we just take for granted because they fit nicely in our hand, if you spread that out on the piano, they're, they're enormous, right? They're wide, very wide. Uh, so I would take that kind of idea of playing just a few tight notes on a different rhythm than she was playing, but still a rhythm that worked with what all the other rhythms that the band was playing too. It was a, a really good learning experience uh, for that. Uh, so let's see here. So your rhythm's affecting the voice. It's bottom three, top three, middle three, back to bottom three, all for that. Yeah, pretty neat. And started thinking about borrowed chords too. Very cool, great ideas. Kevin's back. Meeting's over. Awesome. Great to have you back, Kevin. Uh, Chris says, I just shared my version of Wish You Were Here from 2012 or 13 into the group recorded on my phone. Cool. We'll check that out a little bit later. Um, play goal. He's talk, talks, talking about, yeah play the major, then the minor, then go back to the tonic after that. Yeah, there's a lot of different uh, cadence, it was that plagal cadence, and yeah, that, you know, there's all sorts of different techniques that you could do for those. Um, well, this was fun, 
this was a good time, man. This was a good week. I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, I'm going to put it out now before we go so I can get to them before we, we say goodbye for today. Um, liking the shirt. Fits nice. Uh, I always like this logo, too. I did it. Uh, this is actually this is I, I didn't like take somebody else's circle theme and change it. I actually made this myself. And so this guitar is this right here you put the strap lock button. You can still see on there. And um, I always liked it. I always thought it came out good. And I like the red, too. I'm going to redo the podcast uh, thumbnail for all the podcasts. But I'm going to keep this logo in it. But I think most of them do better when you have a picture and then the logo also in it. So I'm going to have my picture with the logo. And at some point I'm going to. I'm not going to be able to get to that this week though. Um, Chris says I'm going to check out Coke's videos next. Cool. We'd like to see. Yeah. Evan says I always like that logo and the Academy logo too. Yeah. All, and all the shirts right now are just logo shirts. We're trying to We're trying to take a look at the different ones and see which ones look the best and everything. Um, but the, they could be more different ones on down the line too. Um, David says, get those shirts online. They'll, they'll sell like hotcakes. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. We're, we're, we're working towards it, working towards it. Brennan says, really like the logo and shirt. Thank you, man. Cook says, yeah, that's what I'm doing next. Going to catch up on Facebook videos. Yeah, we'll like to you're in an odd place, you know, with the baby and everything. There's, it's, it's, um, you're busy and then you've got time, time. If I remember correctly, I was really busy. And then I had some extra time. I remember mixing one of my friend's band's albums after my daughter was born. I have a, I have a memory of, um, my studio was in the basement of that house and I had a couch off to the left and she'd be there sleeping. And I'm, trying to mix as fast as I can <laughs> before she don't wake up, you know? And, uh, it was cool. It was cool. Zapper shirt. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. Okay. Everybody, a zapper shirt that says, uh, scooter, scooter on the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get in touch with him this week. See what's see what, what he says. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, the zapper shirt. I didn't catch that at first. A little scrambled right now, but the red light. If you should, yeah, I'll take a picture real up close of the logo on that zapper, and it, that it's really brutal. It has a picture of the, that some weird insect with a red lightning bolt across it. Kind of, you know, kind of like one of those. Um, don't do this, with the, but it's a lightning bolt. Could be something like that. Yeah. And says, uh, mixing isn't easy. Yeah, it's it's fun though. You get better at it over time. That the, you know the 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 theme song to the podcast I did years and years and years ago, and if you, if you and it still holds up today, it still sounds good. Someday I'll maybe redo it or do something different, but um, you know we're getting there. So let's see here. Coke says, yep, every two hours you get an hour of baby work to do. Yeah, I guess I remembered it correctly. That's what it felt like. It was kind of like stopping and starting all the time, stopping and starting. Okay, so David says, uh, see you Friday. Have a good week. Cool, man. Yeah, we're going to take off. And Joe's here. He got back. He says, how much for the, sh for the shirts? We're working that out, man. We're just, we're just, um, we're presenting them. So far, we've had a few of the, Play Guitar Academy across the front with the small logo on there. Today's got, we got the the red. This is a cool shirt, man. It's um new era again. It's very different. It's very, it feels fitted like a fitted shirt, you know? The sleeves don't go out like most t-shirts do. It's really nice. Uh, so let's see here. Not on sale yet, but on the way. 
So Gloria, Gloria says, have a great weekend, everyone. Okay, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you hanging out with me for the podcast. And um, and uh, the, um, um, looks like it went, went over pretty good. So I'm happy. I can uh, get the rest of the week going. And I uh, look forward to seeing everybody on Friday when we do our guitar news back here. And thanks for hanging out with me and I'll and have a great week. Bye everybody.